interesting story here. So stock market, uh, big drop yesterday. You can throw this CNBC tear sheet up on the screen that has the details. S&P 500 fell 1.7%, posting its worst daily performance since May 12. A uh, broad sell-off with each of the main 11 sectors of the benchmark registering losses. Dow Jones Industrial Average also lost 614.41 points, or 1.8%. That was its biggest one-day drop since July 19th, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq dropped 2.2%. So um, significant drop in the graph of rich people's feelings. What analysts are saying is going on is a few things. Number one, covid obvious. Delta variant is surging, creating a lot of uncertainty. Um, some new, you know, pull, potential pullback, although consumer spending numbers that came in were actually relatively strong. But uh, some still uncertainty about how is the economic picture going to fare, especially when you've just pulled a lot of the supports, the pandemic era supports, out from underneath the individual American consumer. So that's one obvious thing. Another thing is the DC brinksmanship. Um, that we're going to be talking about more. You've got three things coming together. You've got potential government shutdown. You've got potential debt ceiling breach. You've got uh, the all the machinations around the reconciliation bill. That's also creating some uncertainty on Wall Street. But the one that I did the deep dive on is there are deep concerns about China and in particular this gigantic property development group called Evergrande. So Evergrande has a massive amount of debt, 300 plus billion dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. Now, the property and real estate market in China in general accounts for a huge percent of their GDP, something like 30%. That is massively more than the US, even in the buildup to our own housing crisis. Okay, so this is a really, really significant part of the economy. And what has effectively happened here is that Evergrande and other large property development groups in China, they have used debt to grow and grow and grow. It's kind of a borrow from Peter to pay Paul kind of a scenario. You take out all this debt, you pay your contractors, you build the houses, you get payments in from people to be, build new houses, new apartments, and you're able to keep the cycle going as long as there is demand and housing prices keep going up. So two things happen. Number one, that demand and the housing price, the housing market started to cool off. That put Evergrande in a very difficult position. In addition, the Chinese government has instituted what they're calling the three red lines policy, which basically they recognize, and you can understand this from an American perspective because we're seeing a very similar thing. Housing prices are just going up and up and up. They're getting wildly out of reach for people. It's totally overheated. It's this gigantic bubble. They're worried about these companies like Evergrande having these huge amounts of debt. So they put these new restriction regulations in place to try to slowly deleverage some of these property development giants. So all of these things came together to make it impossible for Evergrande to continue to borrow more money, to continue kind of this scheme and this, you know, effectively a pyramid scheme, or like I said, borrowing Peter to, to pay Paul. So now they're in a place where they are on the verge of complete default. People are calling it a potential Lehman Brothers moment. You'll recall in the U.S. and the financial crisis, Lehman Brothers went under. They were so enmeshed with the entire economy that that triggers this massive domino effect, leads to the balance, leads to this whole collapse. Well, it's a similar deal here in that you have Evergrande very much enmeshed in the entire economy because I call them a property development group. That's the core of what they do. They do all kinds of other stuff, even with electric just that. Cars, yeah. yeah, they electric cars, which they haven't actually built any, but they have an electric car division. They own a soccer team. They have a theme park. They've got like mineral water or something mm -hmm. that they're They've got their hands in all kinds of things. They've got 200,000 employees. They have 1,300 different projects in more than 280 cities across China. And another couple more aspects of this. One and a half million regular Chinese citizens have given them deposits yep. to build houses that have not actually been built yet. So Chinese public, very upset about what's going on right now and wondering if they're ultimately going to get their home that they paid for, not to mention upset that they see those who are already homeowners, they see prices declining. So the thing that they invested their life savings in and wanted to build wealth through, which has been a key driver of Chinese wealth creation, 
That seems to be not working out for them right now. So there have been protests um, taking over the headquarters of Evergrande. And then the last piece of this, before I play a little bit of what the BBC had to say about this, or Reuters, sorry, had to say about this, um, is the fact that a lot of these cities in China, especially second and third tier cities, the way that they finance their operations is through these land sales. That's how they make up the revenue that they need. Evergrande and other property development groups have been a key component of financing, of buying this land and helping to finance these cities. So again, that's why, even though one thing that's different is Lehman Brothers didn't have like real assets, Evergrande has real assets, real property, real companies that they are trying to offload in in a certain way, causing again prices to continue to go down. But the contagion and the potential for a sort of domino effect because they are so intertwined with all of these development companies, with all kinds of different banks, with 280 different Chinese cities. That's why this is such a big deal right now. Let's take a listen to a little bit of what Reuters had to say about it. Pressure on property group China Evergrande has intensified. Fears over its ability to repay investors triggered protests earlier this week and will likely rattle Beijing. The cash-strapped group, which has about $305 billion in liabilities, said on Tuesday it's engaged advisers to examine its options. It warned of default risks amid plunging property sales. Regulators and financial markets are worried that any crisis could ripple through China's banking system and potentially trigger wider social unrest. In the latest development, Evergrande said two of its subsidiaries had failed to uphold guarantee obligations for $145 million worth of wealth management products. So you've yeah. got a lot of upset people there at Evergrande HQ. You've got you know China warning banks that they're not going to make their interest payments. You have this massive debt burden that is way beyond what their assets can support and certainly way beyond what their cash on hand can ultimately support. And the big question is, is the Chinese government going to come in and bail them out? Now, you may think that that's obvious. Like, I yes, thought it was. Yeah. yeah, it's obvious. Of course, right. they'll come in and bail them out. They're going to be fine. Of course, like every other big company in China, they're totally intertwined with the Chinese Communist Party. So they're going to come in and bail them out, and it's all going to be fine. That may well be the case. But um, Xi Jinping has been trying to institute these reforms, and this isn't the first time where they've had to deal with the situation of companies getting way on over their skis, being way over leveraged in this insanely irresponsible way. And so they are concerned about this idea of too big to fail, this concept of um, moral hazard, the fact that if we bail them out, then all these other property groups, all these other gigantic corporations know that they can just wildly borrow and spend and grow, grow, grow without any concern of what the ultimate ramifications might be because we've essentially said, yeah, you are too big to fail, and so we're putting in a backstop here. Yeah, and this is the fascinating part, which is that I did not know this. Evergrande's total debt burden is the biggest for any publicly traded real estate management or development company in the world, Huge. okay? So the entire world, they have the largest of any publicly re- traded real estate company. What's even more interesting, and there's so many connections to the financial crisis, it's just yeah. so hard, is that they, despite having pile on this debt, have been paying out billions of do- or yuan in dividends to their stockholders. The largest shareholder is, of course, their owner, Mr. Wee. Now, Mr. Wee has made $5.3 billion in mm-hmm. dividend payments just since October wow. of, 2009, of 2018. And the biggest problem is his company is, as you mentioned, those three red lines, he is now in violation of all three. So there's a lot going on here. I think the most important part is that most Chinese financial engineering does not result in losses actually in China and to the Chinese people. Usually the people who get screwed are us or (laughs) their own billionaires in terms of throwing each other in prison. There's a lot of like financial scheming or, you know, Jack Ma or whatever, like the richest people. Here, you actually have a case of their China, their financial engineering and their kind of like crazy rapacious capitalism, which they borrowed from us, actually screwing over normal Chinese people mm-hmm. who 
Housing is incredibly important to the Chinese middle class. They see it as a way to actually build equity and wealth. They actually lined up outside of Evergrande 25 years ago in order to go and put down deposits on apartment buildings because they were so excited about some of these reforms that were introduced within the economy. So ownership and property is a huge part of Chinese society, of your you know, social status and all of that. Losing out on that and having that rug pulled from under you by, you know, these kind of billionaire elites makes it now that the CCP has a real choice. Do they bail out the company and make sure that the deposits are safe for these one million or so Chinese? Here's the other problem. It's not just Evergrande. They happen to be the most leveraged and the most screwed. But you were telling me, they, and I looked into it, they have all of these interconnected deals right. all across of China with all these other real estate companies. And actually, if you're closely watching the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, just very recently, we saw an 87% drop in a single Shanghai-based developer on the Hong Kong Exchange yesterday before trading was paused. The entire exchange is kind of in chaos as there's other real estate companies all across China, which are beginning to go in free fall. And it actually has a lot of uh, connections to our own housing crisis in terms of when you have 30% of the economy built up into a single sector, then you allow all of this debt in order to spiral on top of each other, which is built only on the premise that the value goes up, hence the stonks ticker, because the stonks (laughs) go up. It's like, well, as long as it goes up, we're good. But oh, the moment that it goes down a little bit and some of our debt obligations comes into clear view, then it's a total disaster. It's a big, it's a big, big moment for Xi Jinping because look, the CCP, what they care most about, other than making themselves rich, is actual legitimacy amongst the Chinese people. Mm-hmm. And if Chinese people, a million or so, in the so-called you know socialism with Chinese characteristics, lose their houses, that's maybe an expectation here in the United States. That's a central guarantee guarantee of the CCP, if they lose that, massive social unrest within China. And you can see how the questions here are not clear cut. Because on the one hand, as you said, what allowed this whole scheme Mm -hmm. to continue was prices going up and up and up. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of it artificially so. And so as long as that was continuing, basically the music didn't stop. On the other hand, Prices going up and up and up means that young people who want to buy in and start their own middle-class Chinese dream um, are increasingly unable to do that, which is why uh, Xi Jinping, in part, put into place these three red lines and trying to reel things in and kind of take the, the foot off the gas pedal so that they could balance in affordability with, you know, hopefully not having housing prices fall off a cliff too much. Of course, they've also got a demographic issue, which just means that demand is not as much as it used to be. So um, these are thorny questions that they have to deal with right now. So look, I think still probably what is most likely to happen is they're going to suck it up and they're going to bail them out. Most likely, yeah. Um, That is most likely the case because the risk here is so high because you are talking about, look, you're talking about 200,000 employees talking about innumerable contractors. That's reportedly some of the people who've been storming the headquarters of these contractors who are like, we're not getting paid. Their own employees not getting paid. You're talking about 280 different cities that are enmeshed and intertwined with Evergrande. You're talking about all these different financial institutions. I think I saw it was like 171 domestic banks and 121 other financial firms that Evergrande owes money to that's not going to be able to make their interest payments to a lot of those banks. So it's just such a gigantic risk and so intertwined throughout the Chinese and ultimately global economy. That's why you would still probably bet on them just saying, eh, well, I guess it is too big to fail. And I guess we are just going to continue to have that moral hazard. But it is not a certainty whatsoever. I just saw a flash from Bloomberg. Wall Street bets on China to bail out Evergrande. So we'll yeah. see. The Wall Street well, guys. you know, those guys, they never get it wrong. They never Saturday. get it wrong. <laughs> so it's, I mean, I, my faith. Here's the thing. I'm just so saddened to see BlackRock and many other private equity groups who took a big mm. position in Evergrande and, uh, and put— and imported so much of the Chinese system into our own markets. It used to be that our markets infected the rest of the world. Now it seems (laughs) that they are coming to infect ours. It's just the triumph of globalization. Mm. 
And I'm just so happy for Wall Street for having to brought this to our shores. And now, you know, possibly wiping out 401k benefits for like firefighters because the Chinese can't have their real estate yeah. uh, markets under great, control. Great just a for triumph us. for America. Great for us. Great right. for your average Chinese <laughs> citizen. Just yes. beautiful story all the Thank way you, around. Thank you, everybody. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.